Hello. Today we're going to be discussing and talking about an object that we believe represents gender in ancient Egypt, but that is more so centered on elite women and temple religion. But before we begin, I have to believe that you have no idea what a sistrum is. Well, it was an instrument that made a sort of clatter or jingle sound that was dedicated to the goddess Hathor, and it was used as a way that appeased gods and goddesses. The time where our sistrum had been discovered was during the late period, dynasty 26 to 31 inside a tomb. While most sistrums were made to be played for the present day, ours in particular was made for the afterlife, not against the object itself and what it looked like. The sistrum is made up of finest material. I describe it as a glazed finish that tends to be used on most ceramic objects. The Egyptians would describe it as tehenet that which is brilliant or scintillating. Nonetheless, this material was used to create an object like our system you're viewing now. As we can see, the system is of a greenish or turquoise-like color. Knowing this, we can tell that this was a luxurious object that elite Egyptians would have owned. Looking at the object visually, you can see a face at the base or at the handle of the system. The face of Hathor looked to be in the shape of a cap, due to her features being elongated in facial and ear structure of the face. In ancient Egypt, Cows were not only important and popular domesticated animals, but were representative of the goddess Hathor, an iconographic symbol of fertility and motherhood. The iconography of Hathor is important when discussing the system because it gives us more of an idea about a woman's place or rather role in the temple. The top portion of the system is what looks to be of a shrine or naus to worship the goddess Hathor. People who may have been worshipping the shrine are priestesses, elite women, chantresses, or even musicians to the goddess Hathor. We can infer that women, were the ones who were closely related to the object because Hathor was closely associated with women in terms of fertility and motherhood. Shrines were typically located in temples that were built for gods and goddesses. Overall, the system depicting the shrine symbolizes and emphasizes the religious aspect of the object itself and the importance of worshipping gods was for Egyptians and gives us a greater understanding of how both religion and gender coincided with one another. To understand the significance of the system, we need to dive into Egyptian religion. Egyptians believed the world was made up of binary forces such as order and chaos, life and death, male and female. It was up to the king to maintain ma'at, a balance between these forces, or else the world would plunge into disarray. This responsibility was spread across a system of priests and temples, all prepared to please the gods and ensure the preservation of Egyptian life. Religious duties within the temple revolved around the god statue. Priests and priestesses would offer food and drink, dress the figure, and conduct prayers. The religious sector was one of the few places where both men and women actively participated. However, women's participation declined during the New Kingdom. Women were usually excluded from bureaucratic jobs and never taught how to read or write. Certain roles in the priesthood required some level of literacy, like the head and lecture priests who needed to recite rituals, so those were held entirely by men. Music plays a vital role in temple religion. Singers of the interior would accompany the priests into the inner chambers of the temple that held the statue of the god. While the men presented offerings, the women made music. The act was said to both entertain and soothe the deities, making it an important tool to maintain ma'at. Groups of dancers and singers called kenners would often perform at festivals, funerals, and during childbirth to ensure the god's favor in all activities. Musicians used a variety of different instruments, including lutes, harps, drums, and clapsticks, but the sistrum was the most important. More importantly, the sistrum and music was connected to the concept of revival. In the afterlife, the dead harnessed the creative powers of the gods through sexual stimulation in order to be reborn. The sensual nature of the priestess's chanting, accompanied by the shaking of the sistrum and acrobatic dancers, helped initiate this process. A chantress offering a sistrum to the deceased was thought to grant a good afterlife, such as the one seen in the painting from the tomb of Rock Mira, dated to Dynasty 18. Now let's look to see what was happening within temple religion at this time. During this dynasty, political power within Egypt was beginning to be dominated by foreign powers. To gain political backing was through the use of temple authority. During this period, Santik I had arranged a political marriage between his daughter Nidukris and the Theban temple authorities. His daughter played an important role as she had been deemed the god's wife of Amun, which set her as an elite woman with economic and political power with the backing of temple authority. The importance of temple religion during the late period was marked by shifting attitudes and who had real power. Rather than having priesthood be a hereditary occupation, it had transitioned into the adoption of successors. The process of this adoption thus led to their successors to be known as the first prophets of Amun, generals who invaded Egypt at this time, used titles of first prophet to gain control over southern Egypt. In the case of Samtik I, he led his daughter Nidukris to be adopted into Theban temple religion. Historians believe that the decline of female authority within temple religion was due to their exclusion from state bureaucracy during the 18th dynasty. 
Only women with higher social status could participate in temple affairs and remained active in roles pertaining to the goddess of Hathor and in mortuary sex for the fathers and husbands, and only queens were allowed to become the god's wife of Amu. The role of god's wife was to be the royal heiress to the throne, and with the king to marry her to a god, they would be known for conceiving the divine pair. During this period, the cult of Amun at Thebes had the most power. That is why kings gained political and economical support. It was not until the invasion of Cambyses and the Persians that the decline of God's wife had been reduced. Not in the religious sense, but that of political power. Well, that's all for now, folks. Thank you so much for joining us on this venture in discovery of gendered objects in ancient Egypt. We hope you enjoyed and learned something. Be safe, and thank you.